Well, it's good to be here again. And, um, yes, the blessing. Well, let us pray. Just let us thank. Holy Spirit, we so thank you for your love. Um, we thank you for God the Father and God the Son. But we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here amongst us. And I ask that some of my words would be from you. And the stuff that's not from you, we can throw over our shoulder. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for your love and thank you for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning I had a funny thing, and I've never had this before. But um, I don't know if I should be telling you, but it sat on my, it sat in, just in my, in my memory. Um, I was washing on my breakfast, and suddenly I looked out, and I saw a tiny cloud. I mean, just a, a little bit of mist in a circular, and it was a strange thing. And I was thinking, what is that? And I, I, not uh, nothing about Moses or anything, but I was thinking, what is that? And I then thought, you know, the Holy Spirit, he is, he's everywhere, so he's wandering around. And um, I just went, oh, well, I've never seen anything like that. But it might have just been my imagination. It might have been mist in my eyes. Who knows? But it was just a, it was just a little thing that we all have those moments when we think, oh, what is that? And we just need to rest and, and know that the Holy Spirit is with us all the time. And um, the blessing of living in unity is, has come from, um, it's come from uh, unity. We, we mentioned um, when we had our prayer day, it came up. Um, Psalm 133 is what I'm going to speak about. But first of all, last week, um, we had last... This last Thursday, we had June D-Day, of the, the commemoration of um, D-Day in 1944. And, um, and it took place in a remarkable memorial place in Normandy um, on the banks of, the, of the, one of the beaches called Beach Sort, I think it is called, and... Um, and there were 40 veterans, um, 40 veterans who had between the ages of 89 and 105. And it's remarkable. It was a remarkably, for me, it was very emotional. And it was a unity of commemorating the lives, the 1,450 or so I think it was, 1,450-something soldiers' lives that were lost on that day. But it was to bring, and um, the 1,450 lives of soldiers, and or including the, the French civilians. And um, what is remarkable is it brought freedom, and it was the beginning of the liberation and the end of the Second World War. And yet this, what was interesting about it was it was a national unity, which actually is a lower bar, a far lower bar than for us being united into God's family. And, and, and yet I was really emotional about D-Day, and, and I suddenly thought, hey, what is what the work of the cross of what Jesus has done for us is far vaster than anything of the unity of those amazing men and women who served to give the world liberation from tyranny. And it just made me, what was interesting, um, I thought, I like little words, I like words, um, though I don't read them very well. Um, the French guy, what's he called, Macron, gave um, the Legion of Honour, was awarded to a Christian lamb 
Now, I caught that word, that name, just, she was a remarkable woman. She was someone who did um, the maps in, she never even went to the beaches, but she knew about what was planned on D-Day, and she was drawing up the maps. Um, But I was just caught on the name that we have the Lamb. So I felt the Lamb of God was there. I felt the Holy Spirit was very present. And what was even better, so I'm talking about D-Day when I'm going to get on to um, Scripture soon. Um, uh, But what was the other thing was good about D-Day was that the royalty were the veterans, not the royals. And it was reversed. Suddenly, the royals were serving the veterans. And that is what God is doing for us. That's what Jesus did for us. He came to serve, and he didn't come as a king. He came as a servant. And, um, yeah, so we move on. But we move on to... um, the unity, going back to God's call on us being far vaster, the, uni- the, the tragedy, and it's the tragedy of the Christian church in the West, is that we are occupying silos of judgment. And it must be so distressing to God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, um, so we talked about... So I'm going to get going now. And we talked about um, Psalm 133, which is just three verses. And, and I've done a little bit of research about those three important, really important verses. Um, so we are... Um, we, we had this on the morning of when we walked into into our time of prayer together, our day of prayer together. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured onto the head, running down the beard, on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar, of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. And on the morning, we had a little discussion about it being rather awkward about the oil kind of, you know, it's, it's not in our culture to have oil pouring down on the beard, dripping off the beard, and we're kind of awkward about it. But actually, in, in, the, Old Te- in the New Testament, the Jewish culture was about the anointing, of anointing your guests. And it came from um, Exodus, I think it's Exodus 30, verses 25, 22 to 25, which details um, how, the oil, how what the oil was made up of. And it, it's made up of, and he says, take all these spices and, half, and, and fragrant cinnamon and 250 shekels of fragrant Calamitous, calamitous, I don't think it is calamitous. Right, and um, 500 shekels of cassia, all according to the sanctuary shekel, and a hint of olive oil. And this must have been an extraordinary aroma. And the high priest did this, and that is the reason why Aaron is in this um, this psalm because he was the first high priest and therefore he um, he gets this deal basically, he gets the anointing and I think that is just, it's just I've always wondered why it was Aaron but it, we now know that it was because of this extraordinary um, that the high priest was the man who had this extraordinary anointing before he went into the holies of holies 
and and coming back to running down and it has running down twice um, and falling and all that is it's coming from heaven down onto us onto the body onto his robes and the robes represent us as well we're in that picture of of Aaron's um, clothing and his he's just saturated um, and it just it speaks of how good it is when we are in unity like oil being poured over Aaron's head the abundance cascading I mean it's just whoosh um, there's nothing we can do about it so um, and it, sorry, I'm just, there we are we've done, we've done that page Right, and, and it comes on to, um, Luke retells the story of Jesus um, about the anointing. When he was anointed, um, he was invited to Simon, uh, sorry, it's in Luke 7, verses 44 to 47, and he was invited by Simon the Pharisee, um, to Simon the Pharisee, and to his home, and they, and obviously Simon was a curious man, and I, I, you know, in a funny way, in that day, I, I could have been a Simon, just wanting to know who this Jesus was, and, um, and I would have wanted just to entertain him, and, and have people around, but of course, this, this, um, as we know, this party was gatecrashed by this woman who had a scandalous background. And they, everyone at the, at, the, at the meal really would have had a huge judgment on her. And um, Jesus was completely at ease with her. And he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house and you did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears, wiped them with her hair. You did not kiss me, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown, but whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Now, he's, it's, it's just, it really is quite a good piece of Jesus just putting, coming at us, coming and speaking to all of us, and me particularly, to say, hold up on your judgment, Ginny. You know, you know suspend your judgment. Come with mercy and come with lightness of spirit and, and come with generosity. The generosity of this oil pouring over Aaron's beard is something that we might have, um, we might just say that's enough now, but it was just coming over him. Um, and then we come on to the fragrance of this um, anointed oil that actually Paul in Corinthians 2 verses 14 to 16 we are to be active diffusers of God's amazing aroma so I'm just going to read this for we are the aroma of Christ to God among those being saved and among those who are perishing to the one, a fragrance from death to death. The, uh, to the other, a fragrance <clears throat> from life to life. Who is sufficient for these things? And I, I, what's interesting about that verse for me is our prayers are as a fragrance to God. They are an, as an incense to God. And I'm just encouraged that we mustn't stop our fragrance 
and mustn't, you know, it's so exciting when you go into a, a place where there's, I've got a rose in my garden, um, which is really, absolutely got an amazing scent. It's a, a climbing rose and it's about six years old and it only flowers once and it's um, just so smelly. And um, when I, I mean, it's such a good smell. So you, we always think that smelly means bad, but it, it, sorry, it's such a good perfume. Call it nicely, Ginny. It's not, anyway, but um, it, this, this is called, anyway, it's a lovely rose. And every time I pass it, I want to just brush through it, except it's full of thorns. But anyway, um, it, but you know, I'm just always going up to it saying, are you still are you still giving off your scent? And, and we forget that we carry the scent of Christ around with us. So the Holy Spirit is around, within us and he is around us. And that is enough. That is enough. So, you know, um, I was just aware that Steve saying he woke up feeling inadequate about worship. But actually, it's enough. The Holy Spirit loves us because what we offer is enough if it comes from our whole heart. And, and, and we just have to really remember those basic things. So um, we then move on. It's so lovely that it's so short, isn't it? This, this, this um, psalm. Um, anyway, we move on to, um, oh, I need to also say that unity is a command. It is a command to be cherished, just as our scent is a command. To, you know, it's part of us, and, and we, we need to look after it and treasure it. Um, it's to be cherished. And if there were a fire in your house, it is something that we need to take with us. So it's precious. We, we don't leave the unity of our family behind. We, we take it with us. At, I mean, sorry, that's a bit of a, a sort of mythy, mythical idea. But, you know, it is very much part of us. So rather than bringing judgment, and I, hey, I'm talking to myself here, on, 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 um, or on, theologies that I don't agree with, I want to be merciful and have this aroma of Jesus around those conversations. And um, that's my heart for all of us. So then we move on. We move on to the third verse, which is about the Jew of Hermon. So the Jew of Hermon, Hermon is the one of the, well, it's the uh, highest mountain in Israel. Israel is full of um, a huge variety of um, climates. It's got, uh, it's green to the north and it's desert to the south. It's got the Dead Sea in the bottom, which you can't swim in because you float. And it's got, um, and, then, and, and, and then in the north, it's very green. So luscious up, toward, up towards um, Galilee and above. And the Jew of Hermon was a mountain that has snow on its top all the time. And it's a place of where there is plenty of water, whereas in Jerusalem, which is where Mount Zion is, and where actually um, the, the, um, the mosque that, I mean, it's called, is it called the Alaka Mosque? Um, anyway, um, is based at the moment. That's where the temple, Solomon built his temple. And, and Jerusalem is quite arid in comparison to um, Mount Hermon. And Mount Hermon has, uh, it, he, he mentions how abundant it is, and it's luscious. And, and it's just glorious that he's talking about the, the Jew of Hermon falling onto Mount Zion, which is where the temple, the holiest of holies, where, um, you know, where, they, where the Jewish um, nation really thought where 
they really believed that that was where God dwelt. And I forgot to say that the guy, um, the high priest, I forgot to say this bit, but the high priest, when he goes in, once a year I think he goes in, and into the holiest of holies, he wears a breastplate on his on his um, yeah on his chest, and it has the twelve tribes. It has twelve stones on it, and he's representing the twelve tribes of um, of Israel. So it it is just the importance of of um, the fact that. God's aroma, God's dew and his moisture and his love and his abundance is on his Jewish people, when, particularly when they come and worship him. Um, so there we have that. And um, so it, it's just the life, sorry, I put this, the life-giving Jew was Jesus coming down modeling what Jesus has done on the cross. So um, I'm on my, last time I came, I couldn't, I lost what pages they were. So I kept on going to the first page when I should have been on the last page. I've, I've at last, and I've learned that you have to number them. So anyway, so we come back. So, God, it's so basic, isn't it? Anyway, there we have it. Um, so then we come back to um, unity and we, we talk about, um, I want to now talk about um, the night before the, going to the cross. Jesus, in John 17, he prays for unity um, in, for, amongst his believers and also for the believers of the future. And this is um, John 17, verses 20 to 24, I think. I think it might be 27. Just previous to this, um, Jesus has spoken, in John's Gospel particularly, it's chapter 13, 14, and 15, and 16, He's, talk, he's explaining how to live and what life will look like after he is gone. And then finally, in this chapter, he is talking about, he's, he's coming to completion by praying to the Father for his disciples. And of course, there were only 11 in that room because Judas had gone away. Um, and the first, so the first five verses of chapter 17, he prays for his own relationship with the Father. From six, and from 16 to 19, he prays for his 11, 11 disciples who were in the room. And then we come to um, verse 20, and he says, My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought into complete unity, that the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. And it, there's absolutely no disputing the importance of Jesus praying that prayer for us. And I, I just, it's, it, it, that whole chapter is somehow quite complicated. But here it's very, very clear, the unity of the church is his, the desire of the Holy Spirit that we would come together um, 
in the last days. And I, I really think after what's been going on in dear um, Gaza, I, it, you know, we are in those last days, it would appear. Um, and I, I just, um, it is, it's the importance of understanding the importance of being unified together as a family. And then, of course, um, we have another verse, which is from Paul, which I think is my leaving point, really, um, which is Philippians 2, verses 1 to 5. And it says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make it my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfishness, ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves not looking at your own interests, but each of you to be interests into the others. And in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus, as Christ Jesus. And that last line, um, have the same mindset, I mean, it's something that we desire. We, we haven't necessarily got, but it's something to aim for. And I just want to be, I just want to encourage you to, to know the importance of being unified. And of course, coming back to um, Steve's um, verses that he brought during, during worship, which was 2 Corinthians 10, and I'm, I'm giving you some more verses, um, 10 verses 3 to 5, which I think um, Sharon will put up on the, on the, on the thing. Yeah, are they there? I just want to finish with that, for because I think it, it gives us a really clear understanding of where we are. Um, for though at uh, this time, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. And we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And, and we really pray for wisdom for that, really. That's really key, isn't it? And we take, each, take captive each thought to make it obedient to Christ. And I, I find taking each thought really difficult because I just float around. Um, but I, I just, it's, it's you know, our, I really pray that we, we have a hunger and thirst for his word and keep our eyes open and look out for, for our own um, pretensions to know that they are not from him who's, who loves us. If, and we need to just put ourselves right at each point when we go there. And it's so easy to go there. And um, I, I, for one, go there all too quickly to make a judgment of the, the scandalous woman who I might not want to cross over the road not to, to say hello to, um, purely out of embarrassment or awkwardness. Um, we don't need to be awkward. We're, we're people of, of aroma, of the fragrance of, of the Holy Spirit upon us. So that is what I have to say this morning. I just want to pray. I just ask you, Lord, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for this tiny, short psalm that speaks so loudly of your unity with, your, with us that we, that's your desire for us to be unified in you. And we just ask that in this coming week, you would have your way and that we would recognize that we have the fragrance 
and the aroma and the incense that we can pour out our prayers to you. Thank you that you are praying and interceding for us, Jesus, all the time. In Jesus' name, amen.